Hello, I'm Lou Gatorix, and today I am going to do something that very few dare to do. I am going to rank every single faction on Rome Total War in terms of how powerful they are. Now, the reason this is so controversial is because it's so subjective. It very much depends on how you like to play the game, so I feel like it's important to begin by actually asserting what my definition of a powerful faction is, and then we can move from there. So how do I define strength? Well, I define it as how powerful a faction is when controlled by an average level player. I do factor in both early, middle and late game difficulty, but I do weight early game difficulty as the most important factor because the early game is the most crucial part. Now, it's an important distinction to make here that I am saying when controlled by an average level player, because when controlled by the AI, the factions are very, very different in terms of how powerful they are. A notable example is Scythia, which is very, very powerful when controlled by the player, but very weak when controlled by the AI because they don't know how to use the faction properly. But anyway, let's get straight into it. I do also want to note that I am not including the Rebels and the Senate in this list because they don't really play by the same rules as the other 19 factions. Let's get straight into the list, starting with number 19, in my opinion, the weakest faction in Rome Total War. Hello there, just a very quick note before the video begins. I would just like to say a quick thank you for getting me to 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. It's been a fantastic achievement and something I'm very, very proud of. And I just wanted to say thank you for all the support that I've had over the last, I believe it's been over three years now. I've been doing this three and a half years. So thank you very much. And I thought to sort of celebrate this marker, this milestone, I'm going to do a Q&A for the first time ever, in fact. So if you want to submit questions for the Q&A, please comment in this video below. You're welcome to ask me as many questions as you like, but if I get literally thousands of questions, then in the video I will limit it, I will limit it rather uh, to one question per person. But what I will try and do is respond to as many of your questions in the comment section. So at the very least, you should get a reply in the comment section, but I'm hoping to answer as many questions as I can. But anyway, just wanted to say thank you and let's get on with the video. And that faction is unfortunately Spain. Sorry if you're from Spain, but actually I have a lot of grievances with this faction. So let's work through it. First of all, their economically weak starting position. Now, I really hate the Spanish starting position, to be honest. They've got a bunch of very underdeveloped settlements in not the most amazing region of the game. It's a very underwhelming uh, group of settlements. But the annoying thing about them is... They're separated by lots of mountain ranges and just, quite honestly, large amount of distance. They have, was it four factions that are just separated on the four corners of Spain, very, very annoyingly. And I actually made a joke about this in my 50 Things Rome Total War Players Never Say, that it takes ages, for example, to get to Asturica. And what that means is, is a long travel time for armies. So if you want to get an army from one settlement to another, let's say Asturica to Oscar, very, very quickly, you just quite frankly can't. Even if you have cavalry and good generals, you just can't. It's very annoying logistically and economically to play as Spain. I don't feel like they have a very good unit roster. The only unit I would say that is excellent is the Bull Warriors, the Scutari, uh, Scutari, I think I'm saying that right, are actually pretty decent as well, but the rest is pretty underwhelming. Iberian infantry really isn't that good, and the rest of the army just isn't that amazing, and the further you get along the game, the more and more underwhelming this army is. I will say in their defence, they are fairly well defended in terms of the fact that there aren't really any dangerous factions nearby. The Gauls are often preoccupied with the Germanics or the Romans or the British. So Spain are pretty well defended, but the problem is their starting position is really not worth defending, quite frankly. I don't like the Spanish faction at all, and for me they are the weakest faction in the whole game. At number 18, we have Parthia. Now remember my definition at the beginning, I said an average level player, and I use those words very specifically because Parthia along with another faction which I'll discuss in a minute, was the hardest one to classify in this list. Because for a strong player, for someone who's been playing Rome Total War for a long time, Parthia is one of the strongest factions. They can be extremely overpowered when you know how to use them. But the problem is for a beginner or an intermediate player, actually there are a lot of difficulties associated with Parthia. And if you don't know how to exploit this, uh, this, this roster properly, then you're going to have a really, really tough time. And there are lots of things I don't like about Parthia. And as you can see at the top of the screen, that notably is the worst infantry in the game. I mean, really abysmal set of infantry. You start off with the 
Oh, the fabled Eastern Infantry, which I have grumbled on about many, many times while playing this game. Eastern Infantry are abysmal. In fact, quite honestly, they are about the same level as peasants, but hey, at least peasants are cheap to recruit, so quite honestly, I'd rather have peasants. They are that bad. I've mocked them on many of occasions, and they also have the very average hillmen, which aren't that good either, so Parthia just really do not have the infantry option. Uh, they have a very difficult starting position as well. The Middle East is a complete mess in Rome Total War. There are lots of strong factions, and there are lots of potential enemies to be had, and it's I think, in my opinion, the most difficult area to start in the whole game, and Parthia start off there. But the problem is, they don't start in a good region of the Middle East, for example, like Egypt. They start off in a region which has a lot of underdeveloped settlements in the middle of nowhere, pushed in the corner. In fact, the Parthian settlement, Campus Sarkai, is literally pushed right in the corner. A completely redundant settlement which won't earn you any money, and... It's just very annoying, so I really don't like their starting position. But of course, I have to note, they do have some excellent cavalry. Um, horse archers, they have from the get-go, pretty much, and they are very overpowered, so if you know how to use them, excellent. You can dominate the map with horse archers, and their late-game cataphracts are good. Um, but yeah, the problem is, you can't use cavalry in every single situation. So for example, if you're storming a city, you're pretty much screwed as Parthia. But it, like I said, for a strong player, for a good player, Parthia is an excellent faction, but I'm talking for an average level player, I think Parthia is quite weak. At number 17, we have Numidia. Now, Numidia, a lot of people like to mock Numidia, and actually, I don't think it is as bad as other people think. Now, one of the reasons they do mock it is, like you can see at the top there, it says the worst starting economy in the game. I mean, really, it is abysmal. And although they have a decent number of settlements, you know, they have Dimidi, uh, they have Kirta, uh, Tingi, whatever that settlement's called, the problem is they're underdeveloped settlements. They're weak, and they have the same problem as Spain, as these settlements are really wildly spread out across the desert in this case. And it means that basically, if you want to move uh, an army from Tingi to Kirta, it's going to take ages. It's a complete waste of time, quite frankly, even if you have cavalry. You then couple this with the fact that they have a okay army, actually their army isn't really that bad, and their starting army is pretty decent indeed, but again, similarly to Spain, as the game progresses, as other factions take up, you're really going to slip behind, and you're just going to be spamming the same units of New Midian Cavalry, it's going to get very, very boring, repetitive, there's no diversity in the army, and you're really going to struggle against stronger units, um, I, I don't like that at all about New Midian, it's a shame, but yeah, they don't, they don't hold up to the other factions. And number 16, I have the Seleucids. Now, remember when I was talking about the Parthians a few minutes ago, I said there was another faction which was hard to place, and this is the other faction. Because again, if you're a strong player, and I do mean strong in the case of the Seleucids, they can be extremely powerful. The problem is for an average level player, even an average level, or particularly a beginner, it can be very, very tough. So let's talk about the positives first. And they actually have an excellent army. They have some really good spearmen, some nice diversity. They even have legionaries, I believe. They have cataphracts, they have elephants. They are lacking a little bit on the archer side, but really quite a strong army indeed in the early, middle, and late game. So really, I quite like that. But the problem is that is massively, massively offset by their very difficult starting position. In fact, for a beginner, the Seleucids is undeniably the most difficult starting position. They are once again in the Middle East, which is tough like we've discussed already, and they are spread out, so they have the issue of, you know, the same issue as Parthia, they're in the Middle East, and they have the same issue as Spain and Numidia, as in they're spread out. And you combine that together, it makes a really, really tough early campaign. Um, the settlements are far apart from each other, so if you're getting attacked by the Egyptians, Armenians, Parthians, uh, Pontics, or maybe even the Greeks, you, you pretty much have no prospect of getting back up at all, and it can be very difficult as the Seleucids. What I will say is, if you can survive the early onslaught, and you actually manage to tech up and start sort of consolidating a proper empire that hasn't completely fragmented, then actually even for an average level player in the late game, the Seleucids are really quite strong. That's why I haven't put them right at the bottom, because actually if you can survive an excellent, excellent army, infinitely better than the Spanish and the Numidians, but the problem is it's very, very tough at the beginning, so I can't put them that high up. Next up we have Armenia, which suffers from a lot of the same problems as Parthia and the Seleucids. But let's talk about their army first. Again, a very solid army, actually. It's diverse, it has heavy spearmen, legionaries, cataphracts and horse archers. I like the Armenian army more than the Parthian army, um, because I feel like that in the late game the Armenians have everything the Parthians have 
and more, particularly in terms of infantry. But the problem with Armenia, once again, difficult starting position. There are lots of factions nearby. It makes for a difficult campaign for an intermediate or beginner player. And it means they're quite weak because you have to have troops on all four fronts. Um, otherwise, you're going to be vulnerable. And like I put at the bottom there, they're also economically poor. Um, the settlements they start off with are again like Parthia, shoved in the corner, small villages in the middle of nowhere that really won't generate you a lot of money. You have pretty much no access to sea trade and that's what makes Armenia weak, but not as weak as the other factions because actually their army is quite good indeed. And number 14 we have Britannia. Now the next few factions I found very very difficult to rank. I was deliberating for a long time but I ended up putting Britannia at 14th which might be quite controversial. Now the reason this is controversial is because Britannia actually has some very strong strengths and we're going to start off with the very interesting army. I think Britannia has arguably the most interesting army in the whole game. They have some very fun units of infantry. I've actually spelled infantry wrong there. I do apologize. Um, they have some very strong infantry units. They have head hurlers which is cool. A nice army indeed. The problem is it's lacking a little bit, this army. Um, it's lacking particularly in archers. And the army is a little bit disorderly. You're going to have units charging across the place, doing whatever the hell they want. I personally prefer a more structured and organised army like that. And again, sort of leading on with that same theme, they have chariots as opposed to cavalry. They have no cavalry at all. And chariots, although they can be strong situationally, actually, again, are very unruly, hard to control, and I much prefer cavalry myself. But another strength of Britannia is their starting position, a very defensible island starting position. There's basically there's, there's little threat in the early game, I would say, um, to Britannia, certainly on their homeland. What I will say is their army is not very well equipped to deal with Germania, in my opinion, because Germania has some very strong infantry and Britannia is not a good defensive army. I also don't think their economy is that amazing. Yes, they technically do have a bit of sea trade because they're an island, but really the majority of the sea trade is going to be found in the Mediterranean. And with Britannia being put right in the corner of the map, it's going to take a while for you to travel down and actually start getting settlements that are well developed on the Mediterranean coast. So for that reason, I'm not going to put them too high up because I don't think they've got an amazing army, to be honest. I think there are some sort of good, there are some weaknesses. And their starting position, although it is good for beginners because you're not too vulnerable, actually, once you get going, you realize actually it's not that strong starting position. There are much better starting positions for other factions. So they are number 14. At 13, we have Gaul. Now this could be controversial and I think Gaul was one of the factions where I really struggled to put a place on. Um, and that is because similarly to the Britannia, it has some very good strengths but also some very glaring weaknesses. And I think the strengths of the Gauls largely lie in the late game as I've put there, strong late game army. Archers are some of the best in the game. They have really great archers. A forest, the warband, I believe they're called. They have druids, which help morale, which morale is such an important part of the game. And their swordsmen are good. Chosen swordsmen. They have a really strong army. Um, the cavalry isn't amazing, but it's good enough, I would say. Like I said in my definition, I have decided to wait the early game over the late game. That's not. I have taken into account the late game, but I think the early game is the most crucial part of Rome Total War. Gaul have a bit of trouble in the early game. They rely mostly on these sort of very average um, spearmen, which aren't that amazing. The archers are okay, but it takes quite a lot of sort of teching up and money to actually get up to these good units that I just mentioned. And the problem is, Gaul starts off with basically a bunch of spread out, underdeveloped villages. So you've not got an amazing economy. You've not got amazing tech. It's going to take a while to actually reach this strong late game army and by the time you do your empire could theoretically be in tatters or just not really got kicking off the ground yet sort of coupling with this in the early game there are lots of enemies on all fronts you can see for example in my ghoul live stream that i did a, a couple of years ago i think now that actually it can get very much out of hand you can get to war with britain uh germania spain and the Romans, and the Romans are really quite strong, and even theoretically the Dacians, that's five potential armies you could be at war with very, very quickly. And again, similarly to Armenia, you need to have troops on all these fronts because you could be attacked from any side at any time. I think for a barbarian faction to be bordering the Romans is also tough, directly bordering the Romans. It is the only barbarian faction, I believe, that is uh, directly bordering the Romans, and that makes it a little bit tough. You want to develop yourself a little bit before you actually start going to war with them. 
school, you have no choice. They will be attacked by the Julii very early on. That's why I put them at 13. Again, with a strong player, I think Gould would be a lot higher up the list. But for your average everyday player, I put them at number 13. At number 12, I have Carthage. Now, I want you to know that I have deliberated and changed my mind on places 12, 11, and 10 so many times. So the next three factions, including Carthage, I have deliberated on a huge amount, and I believe there is only a fractional amount of difference between how powerful they are. But I've decided to put Carthage at number 12, and that's because they have some very, very good positives. But the problem is, it's a little bit difficult to get kicking at the beginning of the campaign. It's a little bit hard to build momentum as Carthage. They have a very nice unit roster. It's diverse, a lot of options of infantry, cavalry. Uh, it is lacking in archers somewhat, but generally a pretty solid army from beginning to end. I haven't really got many problems with that. Another great thing is they've got an excellent economy to start off with. They have, I believe it's 7,000 denarii starting cash, which is one of the highest in the whole campaign. Um, and they have a lot of potential for economic success at the beginning because they have well-developed settlements on the Mediterranean coast. So that sounds all pretty good. But the problem is they have a difficult early game. They are bordering the Romans and the Greek cities, and there aren't really many nice accessible rebel territories for Carthage to take. You take the next two factions, which I'm going to discuss in a minute. They are able to build momentum by taking rebel settlements, and then once they are prepared economically, technologically, every way possible, they are then prepared to strike against the bigger factions. But Carthage, unfortunately, is sort of just shoved into these big factions early on, and that makes it a little bit difficult to build momentum. So although I think it is a strong faction and the potential to be very strong, the fact is it's difficult to build momentum at the beginning, and I can't say that they are instantly powerful as much as the next two factions for Rome Total War players, particularly intermediate ones. At number 11, I have Dacia. Now, I have changed my mind about Dacia over the years, in fact. When I first played Rome Total War, I used to denounce Dacia as one of the weakest factions in the whole game, but I've sort of reassessed my view in recent times, and I believe that actually Dacia is quite an underrated faction. Let's first of all discuss its very solid army. They have chosen swordsmen, chosen archers, um, and just a generally quite solid army. They also have access to forksmen as well. Really, at the beginning, it's a little bit underdeveloped, but actually, as the game goes on, they can really tech up and get a pretty nice, solid army. So I don't really have much trouble with the army. Not the most exciting or diverse army, and not the biggest unit roster, but not terrible at all. Another great thing about them, which is why I put them ahead of Carthage, is what I was just alluding to a second ago, which is they have a lot of easy rebel settlements to take early on. Dacia is literally surrounded by rebel settlements. Now, yes, admittedly, they are pretty rubbish villages in the middle of Central Europe, but it gives Dacia a little bit of opportunity to build an empire, get a bit of momentum at the beginning of the game, and then they can go, they can strike down south towards the Macedonians and the Greeks when they're ready. Bear in mind, they won't be attacked that likely by the Macedonians and the Greeks. They're more focused on the Brutii or whatever. They've got time to focus on themselves and then attack when they're ready, and they can be really quite powerful. And once you attack, you can actually negate the fact that you have a poor underdeveloped starting position. It is admittedly one of the weaker economies in the whole game Dacia has, but once you are ready to attack Macedon and Greece, you're gonna go into the most prosperous area in the whole game. So quite a poor starting position, but actually they border one of the strongest starting positions. So it's somewhat nullified. I really do quite like Dacia, and I think that for beginner and intermediate players, it is one of the most perfect campaigns to play because it eases you into the game. It eases you into taking these easy rebel settlements, which is nice, and then when you're ready to strike, you can start earning some money really quick as Dacia. And at number 10, I've put Thrace. Now, I want to say that really, I think there is a fractional, fractional dis uh, difference uh, between Thrace and Dacia, but there is one important distinction which for me separates the two factions out. But let's just go over Thrace very quickly. Um, they have some excellent infantry units. I've highlighted the Bastani there, which are famous. They are famed uh, for their two hit points, which is an excellent stat. Um, it means they're really, really strong, hard to kill in battle. I do love the Bastani, but they also have um, excellent other options like Falksman, much like the Dacians do, and they have some hot plight options as well, which is cool. However, they do somewhat lack in the cavalry front. This is pretty common for Hellenic factions, and unfortunately Thrace does suffer from that as well. Now, they have a pretty decent starting position, I would say. 
Um, pretty similar to Dacia, honestly. There's some nice rebel sediments nearby. Byzantium is one which is pretty much ready for Thrace to take if they can beat the Macedonians to it. But the reason I put Thrace above Dacia is because I feel like they have many of the same strengths and weaknesses as Dacia, but the important distinction is they are not a barbarian faction. In Rome Total War, barbarian factions can only get up to level 3 cities, but non-barbarian factions can get up to level 5 cities. And that's important because it means that actually once you progress through the game, Thrace can become a lot more powerful because they have a huge amount of technological, economic uh, production advantages over Dacia because they can simply construct many better buildings than Dacia can. And number nine, we have Pontus. Um, now Pontus has a really excellent starting position. Really, I mean, amazing starting position, to be honest. Um, they can take Anatolia with ease, really ease, and they can feast on the vulnerable uh, Greek cities and Seleucids. What do I mean? Well, the Seleucids are weak, we've discussed this already. If you attack the Seleucids, they're not going to have much rebuttal because they're probably being attacked on three other fronts elsewhere. So you can take the Seleucid settlements with pretty much ease. Um, the other settlements in Anatolia are like rebel settlements, which are, again, easy to take. And then you've got one solitary Greek city settlement um, in Pergamum, and again, because their empire is so spread out, actually, they're not going to have much of a rebuttal anyway. So within a few turns, you can take Turkey, even as an intermediate or beginner player. And once you've done that, you've got a pretty strong economy. You've got an area which, quite frankly, nobody's going to really attack because the Macedonians are too preoccupied with the Brutii. The Brutii are going to take a while to get over to Anatolia, so it's not too much of a threat um, to you. And then the Middle Eastern factions are squabbling to the east. So you've got a sort of nice consolidated region with good economy pretty early on, which I like. This is coupled with a pretty solid army as well. No super overpowered units, but they've got good enough spearmen with excellent long spears. And the Pontic Heavy Cavalry is really quite strong, and they have chariots which can be situationally useful. But again with Pontus, unlike Britannia, they have the luxury of the chariots and the cavalry, which is something I really, really like. At number 8, I have the Greek cities. Uh, now, I've played the Greek Cities campaign on YouTube, you can watch that, and I feel like they have some really, really excellent strengths. They do have a few weaknesses, but they can be a really, really strong army, even as an early or, or, or intermediate game player. Um, they have an excellent defensive army, good hoplites, um, not militia hoplites, by the way, absolute trash on very hard difficulty, um, but they have the normal hoplites and the armoured hoplites, and then ultimately the Spartan hoplites, which are one of the best units in the whole game. So really, really good. And they also have excellent mercenary options as well. Their archers aren't amazing, but you can pretty much get Cretan archers very easily. You know, they're good mercenary options in the sort of Hellenic region. The cavalry isn't amazing. We discussed this with the Hellenic factions earlier, but for me, I don't think it matters too much. Um, because their infantry is excellent and the cavalry is good enough, I would say, but not amazing. But what makes the Greeks so strong is they have a very profitable starting position. I mean, you know, the area around sort of Athens and all that is very, very economically prosperous, which is great. They also have the potential to take a large amount of territory early on because they have settlements dotted across the map. Now, it can be a bit of a weakness because of their spread out starting position. It can make you know, getting reinforcements to certain areas, for example, Sicily, quite difficult. That's why I've not put them super high up. But this is, I would say, really quite the strongest army we've come across so far, coupled with the fact that they have a good economy and access to wonders of the world and all that. That's why I've put them at number eight. A little bit tricky, but that's what I've decided. At seven, we have Macedon, which is a fairly similar faction to the Greeks, honestly. They have the same benefits that the Greeks do, which is a very nice defensive army. They also have access to wonders of the world pretty quickly as well. Um, but they don't have the glaring weakness of this sort of spread out empire. The Greeks have a territory on, I believe, like four or five different land masses. The Macedonians don't. They're all consolidated in one region, and that's great. For me, that's much better because you already have a sort of solidified homeland which you can build upon. The problem is they do have the threat of the Romans and also a little bit the Greeks. So it is a little bit tricky, but the thing is you've got a good defensive army. So that's somewhat negated. Um, sorry, that threat is somewhat negated by the fact that they have a strong army and an also excellent economy to build upon as well. So, um, But I feel, I feel like you should be pretty well equipped to deal with the Brutia, even as an intermediate player when playing as Maston, because their army is so strong. And number six, we have Scythia. Now, Scythia is an interesting faction. I mentioned them in the beginning, because when played with the AI, they are abysmal. They really are bad. They just sort of sit in the corner of the map. They don't do anything, and they're just 
not that amazing to be honest. But when played as the player, they are very, very overpowered because horse archers are overpowered. You can just conquer the whole map pretty easily with just a single unit. They have the best range of cavalry in the whole game, really. I mean, they have excellent cavalry. They even have female units of cavalry, believe it or not. Problem is infantry, which is a little bit of a weakness, but honestly, when playing a Scythia, you don't particularly need the infantry. Now, you may be wondering, wait a minute, didn't you, you say exactly the same about Parthia? How come Parthia were number 18, but Scythia is number 6? The difference is the Scythian starting position. They have, as it says there, very defensible with little threats. Nobody goes and bothers to attack the Scythians. And what you can do is, similarly to Dacians, you can build up, take a few rebel settlements, take some of the easier maybe Thracian or Dacian settlements to take, and you've already got a pretty decent sized empire. Also, the Scythians are mostly facing, in the early game, they're mostly facing barbarian factions, and barbarian factions are pretty weak on the cavalry front, but they are stronger on the heavy infantry. But the thing is, what is the best combat to heavy infantry in the whole game? It's horse archers. So although the Thracians and the Dacians and the Germanics have decent armies, actually, they are completely nullified by a single unit of Scythian horse archers. So I would say they have the same very good strength as Parthia, but they don't have the very glaring weaknesses. That's why they are so much higher up than Parthia, and they are at number six. Even as an intermediate or beginner player, you can easily exploit this faction to be super overpowered, whereas with Parthia, it's not as easy to do so as a beginner. At number five, we have the Germania faction, the Germanics. And as it says there, the strongest barbarian army, but I also believe the strongest barbarian faction. They have excellent infantry, backed up by morale-boosting druids and late-game cavalry, which is really, really solid as well. Really excellent army. I'm not super diverse and a little bit disorderly like the Britannian army, but these guys are so strong, hardy, and powerful that quite frankly that doesn't matter. They also are strong because they have little threats in the early game. Honestly, Britannia isn't too much of a threat, neither is Dacia, and similarly to other factions we've mentioned before, they have a strength of being able to take a large amount of rebel territories early on, building up a nice empire before they can finally deal with the more difficult factions um, like the Julii. They aren't unlucky like the Gauls and situated right next door to the Julii where they're pretty much screwed. Germania has a little bit of time to sort of just ease into the game, build yourself up before dealing with the big guns. The economy isn't the greatest, that is the weakness of Germania. I would say they have one of the weaker economies in the game. But again, similarly to Dacia and Scythia, just build up a large empire and that won't be too bad. A large empire of rubbish settlements is okay at building up the economy. It's not amazing, but if you deal with the economy decently, you, sh you should still be fine. It's not. I honestly don't find it too difficult to um, build up an economy, um, even as a beginner in Rome Total War. And number four, we have Egypt. Egypt is a really, really overpowered faction for many, many reasons. And I've put at the bottom there little weaknesses. I was trying to think of a weakness of the Egyptian faction, and quite honestly, I couldn't think of one. This is an amazing faction, and is the strongest non-Roman faction in the whole game. They have an excellent diverse army, uh, strong spearmen, pharaoh's bowmen, which are some of the best archers in the whole game. They also have chariots, which can be, can be quite dangerous as well, but they also have cavalry options as well, so they have that sort of diversity in terms of their horse options, which is great. But really what makes Egypt so, so strong is coupled with this amazing army, you have an amazing starting position as well. You have access to wonders of the world, very strong economic position, little threats, honestly, to the homeland because to the west there is one Numidian faction, which won't be a threat to you at all, and then just a expansive deserts there's nothing to the west to the north there's the, the the sea so no threat there and to the east yes there are factions there but they're going to be squabbling amongst themselves in the sort of you know middle eastern region actually the homeland of the egyptians where the pyramids are really aren't under too much threat so you've got strong well-developed economically prosperous starting settlements that aren't going to be attacked and you have a very strong army to go and actually deal with these sort of squabbling middle eastern child factions like uh, Armenia and Parthia. The late game Egyptian army is excellent, so you're well equipped to deal with the Romans, and you will just have infinite amounts of money. It will be ridiculous how much money you have, easy to take up. Excellent faction for so many reasons. Egypt is most certainly at number four. And then at places three, two, and one, we unsurprisingly have the Roman factions. The Roman factions are so strong for many, many reasons, and I've listed a few reasons here. They have an excellent diverse army with little to no weaknesses quite frankly and this army which is already very strong gets a massive massive boost 
after the Marian reforms. Bear in mind, the Marian reforms are something which are free of charge. Um, essentially, I mean, you know, you have to build up to get to them, but the actual reforms are free um, and instantaneous, so your army gets an instant boost across everything. Infantry, cavalry, missiles, everything. A massive, massive boost immediately, which is great. And then you get access to super overpowered units like the legionaries and then ultimately the urban cohort. They also have a strong economic starting position. All three of the factions have access to sea trade, which is great, and also developed settlements. But then also you get the Senate giving you money for taking easy missions like, you know, um, I don't know, blockade this port, blah, blah, blah. Something which takes like five seconds. You can get two, three, four thousand denarii for, maybe even more. So fantastic economy. And the alliance at the start makes each faction just uh, super powerful, really, because they have no threat in the homeland because they essentially have the other factions defending for them by taking out other rival factions. In terms of the individual rankings of the Romans, I've put the Julii third, Scipii second, and Brutii first, and I should have discussed this in the video where I was comparing the Roman factions, but essentially it boils down to the Julii go and take barbarian settlements in a sort of Gaul, Dacia, and Spain region, which we've already discussed are not the most economically prosperous or developed. So they can take a large amount of territory with ease, but the problem is that territory isn't super valuable. I put the Scipio at the second because they take some pretty good territory. They have a tricky time at the beginning, I think, taking Sicily. You know, dealing with the Greeks and the, um, and the Carthaginians is a little bit tough tougher than the Julii I have, but they have a much better economy in, in the late game than the Julii I do, and also they have access to excellent um, naval capacity. They can completely dominate the oceans. And at number one, I've put the Brutii because they have by far the best temples um, for any faction in the whole game. The Brutii are excellent. They also manage to conquer the most economically prosperous area of the game, which is Greece. So once you've done that, you're set for the entire game, and the Brutii are indeed the strongest faction in the whole game. But I think it's pretty undeniable that the Romans are stronger, because it's the, it's the, the factions that the game wants you to play as at the beginning. They are the sort of beginner's factions, and there's a reason. They're just so strong in every way, pretty much no weaknesses. I think it's hard to argue with that. So here are my overall rankings. Please tell me, uh, you know, how you would compare. I'd be very interested to see. I think that the most difficult part for me was ranking, I would say, between 10 and 14. Really, there isn't a lot of difference between 10 and 14, and those settlement, those factions were really tough. I took a long time deliberating over which ones. There were sort of minute differences um, between factions, particularly between Dacia, Carthage, and Thrace. I really struggled. But this list would look very, very different if it was controlled purely by the AI. Maybe I could do a version where it was the which is the strongest AI faction. That would be very interesting. And it would also look very different if it was a sort of advanced level player. For example, Parthia would be a lot higher. But yeah, anyway, this has been my ranking of Total War factions. Please let me know what you think of my list. I think it's very difficult and subjective to make a list like this. So I'll be very interested to see what people think. Anyway, I'll be back with more videos very, very soon. Thank you very much, and I'll see you around.